So, um, just coming back from a poetry writing workshop, uh, which I did with a poet called Mark Doty, as part of the Queensland uh, Poetry Festival, which is starting this weekend. And it really gave me some material to answer a question that I got in class. And the question that I got in class was, why do I think people write poetry, or why should we write poetry, or what is poetry for? Uh, came up because I've set my class the question, what does poetry mean to me? And so, of course, students said, well, miss, what does it mean to you? And uh, put me on the spot. I think I gave an okay answer. Uh, but after tonight, whoa, I've got a much better answer. One thing that Mark said was about when we write, we are trying to give form to perceptions. And I figured that could apply to any writing. Okay, so whether you're writing a recipe or an essay or... Oh God, I have to do this somewhere quieter. Hang on. I mean, it could be a, a letter or a report or a science experiment or a the shopping list. I don't know. Whatever you're trying to write down, I guess you're trying to use words to get something out of your head. Um, but sometimes the things that you're trying to get out of your head or out of your heart or your spirit or your soul, whatever, I don't know. Sometimes when you're trying to communicate your perceptions of the world, being literal about it isn't what you need. You know, sometimes we're trying to communicate something that's not easily communicated in a literal way. So how do we communicate those things? And that's where poetry steps in. I really think that for you as English teachers, this is a bit of a threshold concept here that I'm dancing around. This idea that we represent things in the world in literal or figurative ways, that we describe them exactly or we strive to describe them exactly, um, or we're striving to describe them in a different way that's not exact. Um, if it hasn't yet brought up this question for you, then ask yourself the question, why do we do any art at all? Uh, so I notice sometimes people in class are very uncomfortable with poetry, but they seem to be okay with novels. Like, but why would we read a story about someone who doesn't exist? Um, and, you know, why would we read about even worlds that don't exist when we're reading things like sci-fi or fantasy? Why do we ever use our imaginations for anything at all? And if you can start to come up with answers to those kind of questions, then I think it's a really quick hop, step, jump to why we write poetry. Um, so for those of you who are struggling with the question of why we should write poetry, read poetry, study it, whatever, um, maybe pull yourself back a little further and see if you can ask yourself some deeper questions about why we do art at all and why we engage in artistic endeavors at all. And if you're the kind of person who doesn't actually think that they do believe art is a good thing in the world and that poetry is counted among those things, um, then, I, then I am curious why you've enrolled to be an English teacher, I gotta say. Like, did you get into English teaching so that you could um, teach people how to write essays so that they can pass their exams and get into uni? Or did you get into English so that you can make sure everyone's got minimum basic reading and writing skills so that they can write each other letters or fill in Centrelink forms, like those kind of everyday texts? Was that it? Or were you interested in more than that? You know, if you're going to be teaching students how to read and write, some of the things we do with reading and writing is poetry. So even just this idea that the subject English or learning how to read and write and speak and listen is going to equip us to do art and engage in artistic endeavours that involve words. Um, you know, that's, that's actually part of our core business. And when you think about what those artworks can be like, so I know everyone's heard the phrase that a picture can tell a thousand words. For me, I guess poetry is somewhere in between. You know, sometimes you take a thousand words to talk about something literally, or you could show a picture, or there is something in between. And that's where the poetry starts to exist. And something else really cool that Mark said um, was that poetry lives in the service of mystery. I thought that was great. Uh, he was talking about the difference between poems that are just confusing, you know, when the poet just hasn't communicated their message and it's confusing and the reader doesn't know what to do with it, versus a poem that leaves space for the reader to think about their own connections or tell their own parts of the story or read themselves into the story, reflect on their experience, all those things. Um, so that idea that 
when you're someone who's kind of new to poetry or, or not really well read in poetry that when you come across new poets and you're just thinking oh I don't I, I can't quite figure out what that what that means uh, if it's a not great poem sometimes that's because the poet was confusing you and they, they didn't do a great job but sometimes it's because that's what poetry does is it leaves mystery is that it leaves those spaces for the reader or the listener if it's spoken word um, to think about the connections for themselves and to join their own dots that's actually what it does and it's pretty cool so someone else in class when we were doing our list poems um, was kind of you know really pressing about uh, what constitutes poetry and and when do we call something poetry and you know I was getting you to write those list poems um, where you know you would come up with a topic like you know cool stuff my dog does and then you would write a big list and it was the challenge is how is this a poem you know what do, what does it all mean and Mark said something that you know gave me some thinking around that too uh, so this idea of using poetry to find out what is there and using poetry to explore a topic. Um, and just by the way, in this workshop, the poet even referred to another poet writing a list poem, so it's really a thing. And how good is this? The title of this list poem was Things I Didn't Know I Loved. <sighs> That'd be a cool list. Um, but yeah, this is just this question of what makes a poem and how to explore a topic through a poem. And you think about something like a list, and, and this is my last thought that I'll, I'll give here. It brings me back to theory, I'm sorry, but just this idea that texts in terms of genre, um, part of how we define a genre is by thinking of the purpose of a text. So if I were to write a shopping list titled Shopping List and then write down the things that I'm going to get literally from the shops today, um, and the purpose of that list is for me to remember what to buy at the shops and the audience is me going to the shops then it's an informational text, it's a shopping list but if the audience is something different and uh, the purpose is something different then yes, those very same words on the page can start to be called a poem Oh, that's freaky um, so part of what determines whether something's a poem is whether it's meant to be a poem and whether it's being shared as a poem and a good poet will not just try and pass off their shopping list as a poem unless that's the kind of cool creative thing they're trying to do but a good poet will use that material to push further to see what else is there to explore the topic fully um, or in depth in some way so Poetry does all these things, and these are the things that define poetry, and some of the reasons that I think poetry is good and an important part of our work as English teachers. Um, more thoughts to come in future classes, I'm sure. Bye for now.